Hey, welcome back to the Code Wolf, and welcome to another video about Azure OpenAI. In this tutorial, we're going to explore how you can wire up your own data with Azure OpenAI so you can build chatbots and other tools that are specialized around your own data and they're not polluted by more general purpose conversations like you might see with the standard chat GPT. So if we look at the sample app that we're gonna be setting up, you can see there's a title to ask your own data questions, but below that it says this chatbot knows about hobbits and Super Mario, but not much else, so ask away. So for example, if I were to say, what is Azure, and hit enter, it's gonna come back with an answer of the requested information is not found in the retrieved data, please try another topic. Now, of course, the standard chat GPT would have all kinds of information about that, but this bot is just configured to know about these two things because the data source that I set it up with has information about those. So in contrast, if I were to say, who is Gandalf, the famous wizard, and hit enter, of course it'll say Gandalf is a wizard mentioned in the retrieved documents, but we can do better than that. We can say, who is Bilbo Baggins? And it'll bring back a more thorough response. So this only has some basic information about the Hobbit, it doesn't have the entire book or all the extensive lore or anything like that, but obviously it has more data about Bilbo than Gandalf. Or if we say, what power-ups can Mario use, since this also knows about Mario, just one more question here, you can see it'll give us pretty extensive information about this. And I uploaded a decent amount of information about Mario, and so we get a more uh, complete response here. And the data that I uploaded is also semi-structured. It's not like a complete essay or anything like that. It's just data that I retrieved from various web pages on the internet and uploaded it into blob storage. So we're gonna see how to set up an Azure OpenAI service, wire that up with a search service and a blob storage repository to retrieve data, and see how we can consume those both from our own app and custom code and in the browser playground. It's gonna be great. Please hit subscribe to support the channel and let's dive in. All right, so let's just jump in and get started. Out in Azure, there's two primary services that we want to create that will be dependencies for this project. And those are an open AI service and a storage account to actually hold the data that we want our AI to work with or to consume. So first let's go out and create our open AI service. And you can get to that by just searching for open AI and picking that from the dropdown here. So let's create our Azure open AI service. And first just pick the resource group that you want to use. And I'll just call this uh, the Code Wolf AI or something like that. And choose the standard pricing tier, whatever you're comfortable with. Make sure to check out the pricing details before you create anything. And then I'll hit next. And all this default settings here, all these are fine. And at the end, I'll just click create. And while that's going, I also have another tab over here to create a storage account. And this is even simpler. I already have our Code Wolf AI resource group selected again. And I'll just call this Code Wolf AI data or something like that. And I'm just gonna choose a standard tier, uh, pretty standard settings here, and just go ahead and create that. So we'll give that a moment to run. And it looks like our Azure OpenAI service already finished, so we can jump over there. And the main thing that we're interested in here is these model deployments. So remember with Azure OpenAI, we can deploy different types of models that specialize in different tasks, but those are all handled out over in this uh, AI portal over here. So let's move on out to here and give this a second to load. And the first thing we'll wanna do here is say create new deployment. And this is where we select our model that I was just talking about. And there's different options here depending on what your subscription settings are and what you're paying for. Um, but GPT-35 Turbo is kind of a good uh, multi-purpose model. This is good for language-based things like we're gonna be doing. And we can leave that setting as is. And I'll just call this Turbo Wolf and click Create. And that's gonna go ahead and deploy our model for us. And let's also check on our storage account. So it looks like this finished successfully. So this is where we're actually gonna upload data that our uh, model is going to consume. So let's go out to our containers and let's create a new container here called AI data or something simple. So I'll create that and that'll pop in right there. So let's navigate into that container and now let's upload a few documents in here. And these can be really whatever you want, but I would recommend picking something that has at least a fairly significant amount of data in it, you know, maybe five to 10 pages of 
text data or some type of structured or semi-structured data. So let's just browse for a couple files here. And I have two files that we're gonna work with. One is uh, hobbit.txt, which is the first chapter of The Hobbit. So we'll see what it can gather about that story for us. And the second one is actually some fairly unstructured data about the Super Mario franchise. Um, it's just some data I scraped off of some Wikipedia articles and things. It's valuable information, but it is very loosely structured. So I'll just upload these quick and those will load in our container. So that's all we have to do for storage. We're all good to go on this front. So let's move back over to our deployment and refresh this. So under our deployments, here's our Turbo Wolf. And from here to set up our demo, let's go over to chat. This is where we have our playground where we can experiment with different models and different settings and talk to our AI and just see kind of how it's behaving. So by default, this is kind of a general purpose AI in the chat here. So if I were to just say, hello, how are you? Uh, you can see we get some general AI assistant uh, feedback here, but we don't want a general purpose bot. We want our specialized bot. And for that, we can use this add data tab. And this is a really powerful feature. So if we click on this add data source, it'll walk you through this workflow on how to get this going. So we're gonna pick blob storage, but note that there's lots of other options here too. So you could use a Cosmos DB database. You could actually just use a website directly or you could even upload files, but uh, those will end up in blob storage anyway. So I just went ahead and created a blob storage account ahead of time. So let's pick that uh, AI data blob storage account. Now, if we were to refresh this, it's gonna say that we don't have an Azure AI search resource. So let's go ahead and create one of those as well. This is easiest to do just from this AI workflow so that you know you're creating exactly what it wants. So let's use the same resource group and I'm gonna call this uh, Code Wolf Search or something like that. And I'm gonna put this in a region that's closer to me. Now on this pricing tier, this part is actually kind of important for the search service. I believe you have to be using at least standard for this to work. Uh, I don't think the free and basic uh, have the requirements to be able to use this for this AI chat that we're building. Now note that this does have a cost associated with it. In my experimenting, if you just create this and test with it for a little bit and then delete it, the cost is very low. It's nowhere near $250, but don't take my word for it. Make sure you investigate the pricing calculator down here and know what you're doing before you start spending in Azure. So I'm gonna click create here and let that run for a minute and that'll validate. And while that's working, uh, we can go back to our playground here. And as we refresh this, eventually when this finishes, um, like I think it just did here, now, if we go back to our playground, you can see that that Code Wolf search is now available for us to pick. And now we have to give the index a name. So this just creates a new index in our search service that helps with data ingestion. So I'm gonna call this Code Wolf Index. And for the scheduler, you can really put this at whatever you want. If you just do it once, it'll never run again, obviously, but you also have the option to do hourly and daily depending on what your needs are but I'm just gonna leave this at once since we're not gonna be periodically updating this just for the demo. And then you have to acknowledge that some costs may occur. And then let's hit next. And we're gonna set this to keyword search type. And it'll give us kind of a nice summary of what we're doing here. And then let's say save and close. Now over on the left here, you can see there's this ingestion process. So it's starting to index our data and pre-process it and kind of get this ready for use by our AI bot. So this can take a little bit of time, it's not too bad, but I'll just pause here for a second while this finishes. All right, so once that finishes indexing, let's first test out our setup here in the browser in this chat playground to make sure that things are working as expected. So over on the right, if I were to start a conversation here, such as what is Google, the chatbot is not going to understand what that is because it only understands concepts that live in our data that we uploaded. So if I were to switch this up and say, uh, what is Super Mario? Because remember we added a file about that in our blob storage, you can see now it's going to give a more meaningful or substantial response. Now this is great, we're able to see that everything is working, but this chat playground isn't all that useful in a real world scenario. When you're building your own app, you're obviously not gonna to wanna to use this in this browser tool here. So now let's start to explore how we would add this to a custom app like we looked at in the beginning of the video. So over in Visual Studio, I have that app open, and this is available on GitHub in the description. 
and you can actually use this app as is if, if you just replace some key connection configurations, which we'll look at in a moment. Now, as a side note, I have a separate video that goes into greater depth of how to build an app that connects to OpenAI programmatically. So in this video, we're gonna just review a few key concepts and then focus on the part that configures our API to use our own data source. So if you're looking for more information, just check out that other video on my channel. That'll give you the answers you need. So here we have a fairly traditional Razor Pages project, and we have our form here, and this is what the user fills out to submit their question. There's just a regular input component here, and that binds to a property on our model called question. And then when the response comes back, it just displays that below the form. Pretty simple here. I'm not gonna go into how Razor Pages works in this video, and this is a pretty simple flow. So that code behind lives in our index.cshtml.cs file. And so if we open this up, you can see where we're binding that submitted question from the user from that input field. And then this response content will hold what comes back from OpenAI, as we'll see in a moment. So the most important part of this setup is the onPost method. And this is what fires when the user submits the form to handle their request and run some logic. And there's just a few key steps to this whole setup. The first step is to configure our OpenAI client. So this is the class that will actually go out and talk to Azure OpenAI. But to do that, we need a few configuration points. So we need the OpenAI endpoint, the key, and the deployment name. And you can find all of those easily out in Azure. So if I were to go out to Azure, I have this CodeWolf AI resource group open. So this holds all of the different Azure resources we created for this to work. And so if we were to navigate down into this uh, CodeWolf AI service first, and finding these keys is pretty easy. So if we just go into keys and endpoint, you can copy the key value out of here, as well as the endpoint. So those will map to the key and the endpoint, so that takes care of two of those. And then the third one is just our deployment name, which we had called Turbo Wolf. So if we go back to our playground and we go over to our models, or if we go over to our deployments, then we can see our deployment name is Turbo Wolf. So those are the three values you need to set up your OpenAI client, and then you pass those in when you're creating a new instance there. So the next part is to configure the search service. So we have to set up a couple configurations here so that the OpenAI client will actually use our search service as its data source rather than just the default model data. So it's a similar deal here. We just have to set up a few key configuration values, which are our endpoint, key, and index. So if we go back out to our resource group and open up our search service, on the overview page, we can find our URL right here. So that one's pretty easy to grab. And then in our keys, we can grab one of these admin keys and that'll be our search key. And then the final value is this search index. So if we go back to our indexes, remember we created this CodeWolf index when we filled out that workflow in the browser. So all of these key values are here now. We can then use those configuration values to set up our search chat extension configuration. So this is an object that holds all of these uh, search configuration points and we'll pass that into our OpenAI client when we send out a message. And that's the final step here, right here. So we set up these chat completion options. So this kind of builds the object that will be sent to OpenAI to get our data back. And so first we create a new chat request user message. So this simulates the request from the user and we pass in the question that they submitted. Remember this gets bound at the top here when they submit the form. So there's our message getting sent over. And then we also attach those search configuration options. So this CodeWolf config, that maps to our search configuration up here. And then finally, we also pass in the deployment name so it knows which of those model deployments to talk to. Remember, we also define that up at the top here with our TurboWolf. And then the final step is just to send that out to OpenAI. And we do that by calling this get chat completions. And finally, we pull the response content off of what comes back from that. And that gets displayed in our page here in the browser. So I already have this running. And so just as a refresher, if we were to ask another question, such as what type of game is Mario? And you see we get a nice little response here with some information. But if we were to ask something more general, such as what is C sharp? It's gonna tell us the requested information is not available. Now remember, this is the most important part for our discussion here. This is what sets the data source as our search service. If I were to just remove this actually, and just take out this extensions here, and then if we were to restart the app, let's see what this gives us now 
if we lose that search configuration. So now if I were to say, what is C Sharp? Ask it the same question. You can see now it actually gives us a full response back, just like a standard chat GPT prompt would. If you want your app to only use a specific set of data sources, you just have to include that configuration. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I have more Azure OpenAI content on the way, so please hit subscribe to support the video. Check out the other two videos on OpenAI on my channel for more information and more detail about coding and getting set up with this service. And I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf. Thanks.